How are we there, guys? And welcome to another episode of the Smashing Crossbar podcast. I'm your host, Josh, once again, joined by Benno. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you doing this week? Oh, mate, you know, it's a typical another another week in Victoria. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can hear myself. Hang the... F- what? What? The hell is going you, on? Yeah, yeah. Pause, the, pause the Facebook site. There you go. I'd already muted it before it even started. That was the worst bit. <laughs> <laughs> they must have kicked in again. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, let us know if you can hear Benno. Benno's running his new mic, so obviously... Yeah, it's, it's fancy and it's red and, <laughs> and all sorts of good things. So just let us know. Make sure you can hear I everybody. I might sound a little bit different. <laughs> um, so, yeah, on tonight's show, guys, we are joined by former Newcastle Jet, Devante Clut. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, obviously, what he's up to these days, his time in, in the A-League uh, with Brisbane... And obviously Newcastle, and um, yeah, see what the future holds for for him. Again, twenty four years of age, pretty much, yeah, you know, A League at his feet if he wants it. Um, MPL there as well, obviously if he's happy where he is. So we'll we'll talk a bit about that before we go quickly into Devante. We will obviously give a shout out to Gabriel Mar, optometrist, major sponsor. Thanks to those guys, obviously down there at Jasmine. Be sure to go check them out for all your eye care needs. It is muchly appreciated. Thank you again, Lockie and Gabe. Ah, oh, Luke's already in the chat with the exclamation mark specs. You bloody legend! There it is in the chat. So, without further ado, Devante, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, boys. How are you guys going? Yeah, good, mate. Good, good. as good as, good. as good as can be down here in Victoria, mate. So, mm. I'm sure you must enjoy being able to get out and. Sort of do things, restaurants, pubs, all the works. <laughs> yeah, doing most things like normal. Yeah, yeah. Most Live, things. living the dream, living the dream. Um, <laughs> so yeah, guys, if you guys have got any questions for Devante, whack them in the chat. We'll get through to them. Um, but I'm sure I'll pick them up quicker than I will. Um, but yeah, make sure if you've got any questions to whack them in there. We might as well start from the very beginning, mate. Um, well, not not so the very very beginning. But um, yeah, you time Brisbane. We'll start at the time of Brisbane, mate. Let's be honest; it was, it was a good, good period um, of football. Um, how did the how did the move to Brisbane come about? And you know, what was your time like? Obviously, in Brisbane, how how did you find it? Yeah, Brisbane. Um, I trialled initially when I first went up, so I wasn't like, scouted or selected or anything. Um, I went up there and I trialled, but. What helped me was having my first grade experience in the NPL in Sydney. So when I went up there, Mike Mulvey was the coach at the time. So I was there trialling for a position in midfield where at that time their starting midfield was Matt Mackay, Luke Bratton and Liam Miller. With Dima Pichard as well and in off the wing. Yep. Enrique and Roy Schweitzer was stacked. <clears throat> so the training level was insane. So... Hmm. I was lucky enough there to uh, to get like a youth contract. It was, it was adjusted for me because I was an interstate player, but I was a youth contract. And then the following year, um, I managed to then secure a first grade contract. But those first two years was insane. So the first four months I'm there, um, I got my debut season that, that year, and that was the year we won it as well. So um, it was crazy. You think about that team then... Uh, it was the last time they won the championship. Yep. It was stacked. What a team. So yeah. I was around a top environment over those three years, four years I was there. Yep. Um, and it was a good club. Great club. Um, top city as well. We can't complain about Brisbane. Oh, you got everything you need there. So as a young footballer with his first opportunity, right, I felt like I was I was at a pretty, pretty high level instantly. Yep. Straight away. So it was really good for me. To move, in, move to Sydney at such a big club like that. One of the one of the things I'd love to find out, obviously, is you know, sort of someone who's played at Brisbane, and you know, look, again, you know, I'm a Newcastle Jets fan through and through. Love the love the Jets, love the away days, but yeah. I can't I can't get over every time I would travel to an away day. It felt like the fans just never came. It it felt so empty and like to me, I couldn't fathom why. Like the you know, the days were perfect or anything like, you know, it wasn't pissing down with rain or anything like that. They just, what were the fans like? How, how, you know, how did you find it in comparison to, like, say, you know, Newcastle, where, let's be honest, we were a bit chaotic and a little bit reckless at times. Um, but, yeah, how were the fans and everything else? 
Did it feel sort of empty to you, or was it just Yeah, me? I think, um, well, even then, I think from, uh, this is where I think, I don't know if it was because I was a young footballer just hmm. coming onto the that I thought the crowds were massive. And then the longer, obviously, I was playing, I felt like they got smaller. Yeah. Or if maybe the numbers actually did. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe it just felt like they were. Yeah, yeah. But I actually felt like from that, say, that 2012 kind of year, the crowd attendance w- was a bit smaller, mm. right? In the A-League. I feel like less people have started going to the games. Yeah. But at the same time, though, if, if we're talking about away games, if there was any any away game at that period, at that time, we're talking 2012, 13, 14. Yep. Yeah. Any away game that anyone wanted to go to, it was against the Wanderers, right? Yeah. Because they yeah. had the RBB, and the RBB, if every club had RBB, it'd be unreal. Oh, yeah. Because the, the environment, atmosphere that they create, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. For both teams, you know? Yeah. Both teams step up for that. So, I think from those kind of years onwards, for me, I kind of feel like it dropped off. But I yeah. don't know if that's due to the league or people's loss of interest. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just sort of weird, you know. Like we obviously Brisbane. It was a from, weird time. It, it was a weird time, let's be honest. But again, not much has changed. Obviously, we um, I done Brisbane with the boys last year, and um, yeah. it's it still sort of. I don't. I just don't know. I just don't know what it was to me. It just sort of, they sort of just sort of felt empty. Um, obviously, I've spoken to a lot of people who have played at Brisbane. Um, you know, Taylor, um, bloody Pepper, Jacob Pepper, and so forth. Yeah. Um, obviously Newcastle boy, it, it, and again you said you know, the the fans when you go to events and obviously your pre uh, your preseason sort of you know fan days and stuff like that it was packed, and yeah. you know what I mean like obviously the fans were there the diehards were there you know you, they wouldn't leave you alone you know not in a bad way just you know it's, obviously they yeah, just wanted signatures yeah. and they wanted to to shine the light mm-hmm. and get the photos with them and stuff like that it's just I don't know yeah. maybe for me it was just the stadium being too big then maybe yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. Well, Again, we go back to that too, scenario you where about, you talk about the Wanderers. That at that time was Paramount Stadium. It was only twenty thousand people. Tiny, yeah, yeah. You know? So tiny, yeah. tiny stadiums are unreal in that sense. Absolutely, and that's why we, um, yeah. you know, Ben and I, have obviously, one of our favourite grounds to go and watch football at is Adelaide because yeah. it's yeah. just it's just an amazing yeah, stadium. Too, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think uh, that's the best best way to go through. But I think that's why everyone loves FA Cup so much too, though. Correct. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. confined. That everyone's so close, the environment's, the atmosphere, everyone's right on top of each other. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know? As I said, it's an interesting. Um, as I said, the FFA obviously was the best thing, one of the best things to come in. It was, it was good. Gives it obviously, you know, the teams like the MPL sites and everything else a, a, a very good chance. You know, we've seen so many upsets over the years and everything else. Um, Beno and I went to one down here at Green Gully against the Central Coast Mariners. <laughs> in jet ski, uh, yeah. only two blokes wearing jet ski just to just to give stick to the Mariners. It was it was fantastic. Um, yeah, then they then they lost and got their manager sacked the next morning. It, it was oh. great. It was great. I felt yeah, I felt, I felt so proud. Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. like we contributed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that was the halfway bomb, wasn't it? From um, yeah, Liam Bolin. Liam Bolin, yeah, Liam Bolin, halfway special over the top. Um, but yeah, so obviously you. you you left Brisbane to come to the Jets. Um, apparently, there was you, you were meant to come a little bit earlier than what you yeah, actually did. Been, there was meant yeah, to be... So, uh, but they voided it. What happened there? Yeah, so at that stage, um, I was uh, unhappy at, at Brisbane more so with my playing opportunity. Yep. Um, and I'd spoken to uh, Scott Miller, and he he wanted me to come across... This is when in the January transfer window. Yeah. Would have been the same transfer as Ugarkovic, so the time wise. Yeah. Um, but Brisbane at that stage had six, seven players with the soccer roots for the Asian Cup. That's when Brisbane were hosting yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so at that stage, that Luisis told me that they needed me and they couldn't let me go and they wanted to use me. But over that four week period in January, I sat on the bench, I think, once or twice, but I didn't, I didn't play. So it was disappointing after that and a kind of kind of cemented my decision to leave that obviously when my contract finished to go to Newcastle what was it, what was it like under Aloisi see I, I, it's not that he was he's a coach uh, the assistant coach yeah was Ross Aloisi Ross Aloisi so John yeah. was the head coach and Ross was the assistant so I, was, I still enjoyed my time at Brisbane it was mm. I was just disappointed with playing time right um, so when opportunity beckoned to go to Newcastle where um, 
for one, it was considered home too, because I've seen yeah. it boy. Okay. Mm. And then everything was on paper as if I'd be playing a lot. Um, it was hard to say no. Yeah. You know, so mm. obviously it was disappointing when I got there and just before the season started, Scott Miller got sacked. You know what I mean? But at yeah. that time, when I had looked at the contract, it's easy on hindsight to say, no, he should have stayed or he should have still gone. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was unpredictable, everything that happened afterwards. I suppose that's the biggest thing of being so young as well. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, everything is a gamble at that age. Um, you know, you've, got yeah. to take, you've got to take their word. You've got no idea. Um, yeah, I understand. And, the, and everyone there that walks on the pitch, and they, they play. They want to do well enough to stay and play. Yeah. You know, so... If you're not playing, then you have to figure out where you can play because otherwise you don't play long enough. Yeah. Then that makes it even harder for you, right? Because then yeah. no one else. Other clubs realistically ask you, when was the last time you played? Mm. So the longer that question's been, the harder it is as a footballer to find another contract. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, two seasons thereabouts at the, at the club, you scored a goal mm. against your former club, Brisbane. Um, it was the only one for the Jets. How did you find your time... Um, in Newcastle, obviously, to take Scotty Miller, Miller aside, um, I can't remember who came in then. Who was that? That was um, what's his name from Adelaide, wasn't it? Mark he, Jones. Jones, yeah, Jones, Jonesy yeah. from Adelaide. Um, yeah, how was he as a coach? How was how was the um, what what was what did he want to get out of you guys? If you can remember, yeah, so Mark Jones, yeah, Mark Jones. Um, he obviously came in a tough period, but so yeah. he had a team that he didn't select. He stepped in right before the season started. And we're still doing well in games. Yeah. But for me personally, I never got to play midfield. Hmm. So I had a couple of games here and there where I was in midfield, but I was playing, I don't know if you guys remember, I was playing false nine in front of Coco. Correct. That was in the yes, Coco. So it was obviously a different position, but I'm not like any of the other boys in the team either. Yeah. But neither myself. The coach says, this is where you're going to play. You, you ask what your job is to do and you do it, right? 100%. Mm. So I did the best I could as a striker. But as a new coach that comes in, you could tell, yeah, obviously they have a lot of pressure on him. You know what I mean? To perform because he wants to try and secure a job. So that pressure kind of overlaid onto us, I felt like, as a team. Yeah. To get performances. And when you're when you're playing for a proud, proud team like Newcastle, then obviously... You need results, you know. Correct. And that year we did well in patches, and we we would we wouldn't do so well, and it was very hot and cold. So it was a it was a tough year. And then he ended up leaving that season anyway, and Eddie Merrick came in. So yeah. so again, it's another twelve months, and then new coach. So it's quite difficult. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. You know, it's got to be so tough on players and everything else. Like at the end of the day, people can yeah, people like Ben and myself can sit here and just go, oh well, you know, shit, you're um. You're doing the thing you love and everything else, and obviously, so many people would be loved to be in your shoes. But at the same time, when a coach comes in halfway through or at the start of a season and just changes everything, it's again you, you got to sort of think of it from a player's point of view of how tough it actually is um, to possibly you know change. You're playing in, as you said, out of position. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you cop flack for that if you're not doing 100 percent the best. Um, you know, you're not playing the best, obviously. Not no fault of yours, obviously. As you said, you come in wanting to play in midfield. You're not playing there. Um, ben can testify, obviously. Currently, Johnny K for us at the moment, Contrumas, he's got so much shit over the last three years. Oh People, yeah, yeah, you know, because he's been playing out of position. He's he's only just sort of got back into a position that's he, he's used to playing in. Yeah, well, he's covered a lot of. Things. Technically speaking, yeah, he does, he's, he's, he's still not playing in the correct position. Yeah, yeah. What was that, Devonda? I'm saying Johnny K, a good example, is he covers all the positions pretty yeah. much. He does, he does really well in all of them. Yeah, 100%. He, that's he, it. He was constantly, I remember that year, I think he was six at one stage and then he was fullback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. I think he, yeah. maybe he slipped in centre back for a couple of games, I think. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, you know, like people just look at that and just go, oh, you know, he had a shit game. I'm like, well, can't. Well, that's know. what I mean, but it was a wave, right? Because even that year, we beat Perth Glory in, uh, in Perth. Yeah. yeah. Which is the first time in a long time. So so it's crazy. Like, I think it was just a very hot and cold year, and there were a lot of good things, and there was a lot of bad things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, One of the guys in the chats put down here. What what was the what's what's some of your favourite things about Newcastle? 
Oh, for me, for me, the, my best thing were the, were the boys in that team. I don't think I could have picked a better better team to to yeah. experience my time there in Newcastle. Mm. They were uh, for unbelievable boys I played with, you know, and they they helped me from the very start, especially uh, Bogues and Hoffman. Right, mm. for a young boy moving down from Brisbane, um, they really they went above and beyond to yeah. help me for my personal stuff, moving in and whatnot. But mm. You get that real, uh, that real like closeness to home in Newcastle, which I really like. Mm. You know, I think it's because obviously it is a smaller town, small city that you do feel connected to everyone. Yeah. Obviously through the good times and the bad times, but yep. mm. I think uh, I really enjoyed that in Newcastle. It felt like I was home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think um, obviously Lucas. We had Lucas um, on uh, last week. Obviously another another youngster. Just coming through at the Jets, and he said the exact same thing in regards to obviously Boogs and Hoffy and so forth. It's yeah. just he goes, he goes. Without those boys, you know, making it as easy as they did, mm. um, it could have been a completely different, you know, different, yeah, yeah completely 100%. different feeling, and you know, f- feeling a little bit outcast and everything else, la da, which is not, not like I said, not not what you want. Um, at the end of the day, whether you're playing ninety minutes every week or you're barely scraping the to get onto the park at the end of the day is your team regardless and um, that's it you know you want that chemistry and you want that bond between players um, but yeah um, I've got a quick question for you Sco- uh, Coco yeah Coco yeah how, how, Coco. how was he how was he what was he like he come in he come in with so much pepper um, gave gave kale or spray um, <laughs> told him he was going to score more goals than him and everything else he um once again, he another got one for the entire season. I think he got one. Yeah, another Newcastle Jets special import. He's, I don't know. Our track record with imports is just terrible. Um, how was he? What was he like though? How was his training? Was he? Was he decent? The training. Oh, from memory, I think he was. Uh, he was very hot and cold. Yeah. Um, but I think if he uh, didn't pump himself up as much, it's kind of hard. You got Tim Cave was one of the best scorers for Australia. Then you come in and say you're going to score more than him, and you kind of you're building a big, uh, a big standard for yourself, you know. But um, he was, I think he was just very someone that was hot and cold. Yeah, I think. But usually these visa players that come in, if they do absolutely really well in the first year, then they're probably too good for the league, right? Yeah, but I think it takes a couple of seasons for anyone that's just coming to a foreign country. Oh, 100 percent. Really, really control so. Yeah. Especially when, but especially when he's here playing in our summer, and he's just come across from Finland when he was playing in the snow. Finland, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think um, he's uh, he's kind of personality, relaxed personality, and kind of guy. It was very opposite to I think what he expected mm. in the A League. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're a striker, you need to be scoring every week. Yeah. Well, that's you know, it. At least on target. Results, Balls need to be on target. You can't be as relaxed. And, yeah, go lucky as you think. Yeah, and that's the biggest you, problem. Would be acceptable, especially not in maybe Newcastle, where he would leave his apartment and you'll see everyone there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You go to the cafe, everyone loves Newcastle Jets, so I think it's very different, right? Yeah, and that's the biggest thing with Newcastle. Obviously, we've had um, <clears throat> Arroyo this year. Again, you know, come in Panama International, everything else, but again, just didn't cut it. Um, and he had his moments. Oh, look, he 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 skilled had his moments. I'm not. I think his skill level and everything else was again quality of a international footballer who plays currently in the international setup for Panama. But his finishing was just woeful. It was just non-existent. Um, he was. I don't know. He was just a little bit behind again. Makes you think about the level of what we have in Australia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing. Well. Our players in Australia in the A League, all these boys could do if they had, if they had opportunity overseas. The yeah. same way we talk about opportunity here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. It really makes you think, like, we do have a high level, but it's just hard when we're so far away as well, maybe. What's the biggest thing I've always right. said, and I've, I've said this to Ben on many occasions as well, and obviously plenty, plenty of people, is for me, getting internationals over here, we need to stop looking at the strike power. We need to be looking at internationals who can play through midfield and through the back, who, you know, who are great communicators and obviously great, you know, great with their feet and obviously distribution. Anyone can score a goal. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's you know, with the right service. I think if you yeah. get the right service and they can virtually, you know, like obviously um, your um, 
Oh, what's his name now? Just I.E. Joe Ledley. Ledley, Diamante, uh, you know, players like that at the moment, yeah. obviously. Players, yeah. who control, players who control the game. Yeah, and they just thread the th- thread the needle, and obviously, there you go. It doesn't matter. You know, obviously, um, Burgess obviously played for the Jets, played at the Jets, and, you know, nothing. Yeah. You know, but obviously goes somewhere like that and gets delivered balls onto a silver platter. Shit. He's now um, yeah. playing some pretty decent football. Um, what have we got in here? Oh, the wife's just popped in. Here we go. Yeah. How how is Chantel? <laughs> yeah, she does good. There you go. She keeps herself busy as she does. <laughs> Keep, keeps herself busy. That's the way. Um, what we, what's it like to uh, what's it like to play in F three derby? Oh, F three derby the best. <laughs> that was one thing. Um, I said that I was really excited about in Newcastle, right? Because Brisbane don't. Ha- Brisbane have a derby, which is like everyone, because everyone wants to be Brisbane. But when you have a set derby, F3 derby, that was my first ever derby competition. Right? I never yeah. played against a proper derby, like a Sydney derby or Big Blue or yeah. F3 derby. So I loved it. I was pumped. And yeah. um, I had all my family there, you know what I mean? Everyone's there watching. It was good. That was one of my favorite experiences there. I think I tried chipping Izzo from halfway and I just missed yeah, two. Yeah. So. <laughs> I went for it. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah, um, what are you... The best thing I remember from the F3 derby that year was, quote, it's not a derby, it's just another game of football. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... Um, and uh, 24 hours, Jonesy was gone. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was his um, famous quote, wasn't it? That yeah. was a big yeah. mistake. That was his biggest mis- one. Oh, that, that pretty much sold it. That's definitely sealed his fate. That, um, yeah, that's yeah, safe. that's sealed his fate. Uh, what do we got? Another one here. Here we go. Do you what was play- it like to play? What was it like to play with the bling queen, Malele himself? <laughs> oh, yeah, Malele. He was a top guy, eh? But I think he, uh, I think he was similar to the Coco. You know what I mean? They come from a different environment. Yeah. And into the A League, where they're very this relaxed, like different culture, and there wasn't that adjustment. You know? Yeah. Because, like you say, you're calling him Bling Ma, Bling Ma Lele, which is obviously would be so accepted where he's from. <laughs> but you come to Newcastle, it was very different, right? Yeah, that's it. How much really? Really people wearing that down there? Yeah. On Bar Beach. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, no yeah, no blinging like, down there, mate. Freaking get your. Get your, <laughs> get your, get your, get your I've got, his, I've got him on. I've got him on Instagram. And now, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I don't scout Instagram very often. And the main two people that I do look at on Instagram is Marley Lay for all these photos with all these like his Gucci rings and stuff like that. It's fantastic to watch him and Diamante just purely for Diamante's the videos. Yeah, he's, he's intense quality. He's, he's all such over a gentleman. Yeah. He's all over. We had um, he's, well, he's been there, done that, huh? Oh, so. yeah, that's it. Yeah, oh yeah, it. Luke, we were talking about him the other day. Me and Josh were. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, talk- Brownie, because he's signed another contract with Sutton United. Brownie, yeah, captain out there now. Yes. Wayne Brown. Well, yeah. Bizarre is there now too, right? So they're in the same club now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. No, he's doing well, obviously, down there. Obviously, um, I think it's a little bit lower than what he should be at. But again, he's captain yeah. captain in the club. He loves it down there. So good on him. Um, and all and the best. Captain, we had another one. I, I can't remember. I think it was like 28 when he was playing with us. He's like 32 or something now. He's still young. I can't, yeah. believe, I can't believe he was that young when he was playing, but yeah, I thought he was close to yeah. 30s then. Um, Always yeah. remember the goal he scored in Ballarat. Ballarat. I was, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that was a few years ago. Against City, yeah. Yep. Uh, do you play much FIFA, and how was it um, being a part of the game? <laughs> I used to play a lot more FIFA than I do now. Quite busier now. Back to the 9-5 to five life, so you'd say. But, um, no, nah, living, living the lifestyle as an alien footballer, you take it for granted, right? Because mm. you got you ha- you lose a lot of things, you sacrifice a lot of a lot of things, but at the same time, you have a lot of benefits. So, yeah. I loved it. I loved it, the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? From, from I was very young when I started, so I always get, people think I'm, I'm 27, 26, because I, I started so early in Brisbane. Mm. So, I still spent a fair bit in the A-League, oh. but... I loved it from from the very end to when I left Jets. Right, I still see the boys here and there. I still go down to Newcastle yeah. when I can. Um, 
I'm down there fairly often, to be fair, before before COVID. My jewel is down there from my wedding, and my missus gets some of her jewelry down there. So we make the effort yeah. to drive down. Yep. But, um, and, and why wouldn't you? It's a great spot. <laughs> oh, it's a good spot. <laughs> See, when, I was in, when I was in Newcastle, I was living out in Glendale. Yeah, so oh, I Glendale. I was further out from the centre. So I was down Hunter Valley all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a feed. It's only 35 minutes out of the road. Bloody oath. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple in here. We'll get back to yours in a sec, Elite, because that's one that we, we're we going to sort of lead off with um, into obviously a bit more deeper about football and everything else. There's one down here from <laughs> Cena. He's cool. Ben, hey. ben hey, you want to have that one? It is. How is Andrew Hall to play with and drink with? Oh, I ne- never shared a drink with Hooley. Lucky, but... yeah. <laughs> yeah, but on the pitch, for me, me and him, we got along really well. Because mm-hmm. we were actually, he was a what? He was, uh, When I first came in, I was a left, left-sided left midfielder, and Midfield, he was a left-sided yeah. winger. Yeah. So we, we started to combine really well, and this was still Nordstrom was up front. Mm. Oh, early true. days, early days, we really got along. Yeah. But, um, Again, another shame. Another shame, obviously. He's still young and everything else, and now he's, yeah. he's his results he's are just magic. Because he's obviously an, uh, a Newcastle boy. Um, and then there's another one where we were talking about Coco saying certain comments where maybe it's just better to keep it keep it down, right? Low level. <laughs> because it, it kept coming back to him. You know? Yes, absolutely. You know, I can't... I can't As a never... guy, he was a top guy, you know what I mean? I had no problem mm. with him at all. It was just, uh, yeah, 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 no. It's tough when you're a Newcastle boy and you know everyone there, so... The biggest thing is he was, that yeah, again, that's it. He knows everybody and... So forth, and I don't think really anyone really had any dramas with him until he opened his mouth no. about going overseas to Europe, and Europe apparently was a central coast. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the great F three jump, eh? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh, but the tifos at the next F three derby were fantastic. Oh, yeah, we, look, yeah, I remember it. it was, I remember the tifo. It said, "Get your passports out. We're going mm. to Europe." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. what you want, but you want to go to F3 derbies and you want that, right? Oh, yeah, I'm saying atmosphere and fans, you need that. That like bitterness, you know what I mean? You'd hate to miss because the players feel that, you know. If you're on the pitch and you see, you see that in the crowd, it picks up your team. Yeah, we got we got told while we were in the was that at, that derby, Josh eight two. You'd hate to miss it. We, went, uh, yeah. we, we got. We got told by the security guards at the at Central Coast Stadium to stop saying Andrew Hall's name, otherwise we'll get kicked out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we we're giving him so much shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't you think guys, we'd stop for about twenty minutes. To, uh, you guys should come to the Sydney United game one weekend. Oh. It, well, Laddie'd be, Laddie be all over that. Sit in it with our uh, supporter group. You hear what they say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freaking um, yeah, a good mate of ours. You won't get kicked out for saying Andrew Hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that'd, that'd, that'd be all over that. Up close, that's it. Really good mate of ours, yeah. diehard Sydney, um, Sydney fan, and he's yeah, he'd be all over that. He'd be down there yeah. freaking smashing tins with the boys, and uh, again, yeah. but that's the joys of local football. That's what it is. Wow. It's a rivalry, and it is brutal. I can remember a game playing at um, you know, Adams. Not you always played at Adams Ten State League back. Um, Back ten years ago, when it was actually called the State League, not NPL now, but um, yeah. <laughs> friggin', and you're playing derbies and stuff like that against Magic and Hamilton Olympic and all that shit, and it was chaos. It was like you yeah. you were you were more scared in the middle of the pitch than what you were off it. Like you were so because they were just sitting on either side and they're just yelling abuse across across from you guys. Easier in the yeah, middle is the cross. They're throwing shit at each other and cross those what? Like, oh shit! They're gonna friggin' um, but again. But again, the passion, the love of football, and that's yeah. it. That's what it is. And they, the final whistle blows or whatever it is, and they po- they peel out of the stadium, and so be it. They move on and wait till the next one. But um, that's um, yeah, the joys yeah, of obviously local football. Bloody, what else have we got there? So we'll start moving obviously out of the Newcastle sort of thing. Um, it didn't, it obviously didn't work out. Um, you moved on. Um, moved down to, back down to Sydney, down to Blacktown. Um, yeah, forty. Plus odd games or whatever it was, a few goals, a couple of good seasons, um, and a decent it? FFA Cup run too. I was going to say the FFA Cup I run that was correctly. Yeah, good. Well, that's good. another top club. See, that's another top club. But I was friends with Danny Choi. Mm. So ah, 
I played with Danny before I went to Brisbane. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and he was there too. So we kind of had that connection. Um, yep. And uh, at, like I said, when I first went up, my first uh, initial thought was to kind of relaunch, so to speak, right? Come back, play, and then try and uh, work my way back from there. But that decision came from FFA Cup run. Mm. Blacktown being a club makes a good FFA Cup run, you know? So that kind of helps me make my decision to go back to Blacktown. Yeah. 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 Um, obviously, we talk about Blacktown, obviously, you know, the Campbelltown, obviously the MacArthur now got their team in there, mate. Um, what's it like out that way? You know what I mean? What's the what's the football... You know, obviously, for us, obviously, is Nova Castrians and Victorians. What's How passionate are they out that sort of... out that way, the back end of Sydney? Yeah, they're, they're passionate out uh, this way for sure. There are there are a lot of people at that way that feel like they're too far to support Senior C, right? Mm-hmm. And they don't feel as close enough to support West Sydney Wanderers. Yeah. So you kind of got like a lot of people that are very just comfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just watching the league, but yeah. now that there's a team and it's a growing area too. As in, like, there still is a lot of empty, empty lands and em- empty, empty suburban areas, which yep. is still growing. So over time as well, so it's a, it's an area I think that's going to be just as big as mm. as these Western Sydney and Sydney FC supporter groups. Let's be honest. Obviously, um, you know they've they've sold out their um met of all their first lot of membership packs that they bought out there, the, their main one, and there was so much hype on it about how expensive it was compared to, obviously, other clubs. Um, like, it was ridiculously expensive compared to, say, the Newcastle Jets. Like, like really, did. it was like an extra 30 bucks or something, an extra 20 bucks or so a month um, on your membership. But again, it sold out. Um, yeah. So, obviously, it, it shows, obviously, how keen and how excited people are in that area to not have to, <laughs> obviously, not have to travel into the city sort of thing. Um, to now watch football and get behind, obviously, another homegrown Sydney team. So, it's well, you got, yeah, we've got Wanderers that play out of what now Bank West, Bank and West yeah. Campbelltown Stadium. Yeah, so that was obviously a joint supporter base, but I think more people would prefer a MacArthur Bull set up at Campbelltown than a Wanderers. Yeah, I think it helps too. MacArthur Bulls helps too, and Wanderers aren't doing so well either. So, I think it helps him. Mm. The people that were a bit unsure, they're definitely yeah. now. Probably committing to the new team. More commitment, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Elliot, this brings into yours, mate, that I wasn't answering before. Uh, always rated you at Newey. Um, do you see more options to return now that the, there's an, an exodus across the league due to COVID? See, um, I get asked a lot, do you want to go back to A-League? Are you interested in going back to A-League? So a bit more into what I'm doing now. I coach full-time with Football Tech, an academy up here in Sydney, yep. which was which was the academy I was part of when I was when I was younger, 10, 11, when I was mm-hmm. much younger. So I'm very very passionate about that and and my coaching with them. That my mentality now would be if I was offered an A League contract, I would then have to to figure out what I'm doing here, rather yeah. than what it was before, right? If I was offered a contract, mm-hmm. I'd take that straight away, figure out what else I'm doing. So I think if I if I was the time where I got if I did get offered a contract then it would be more me leaning towards how would it uh, affect what I'm doing here rather than would I take the contract straight away. Yep. Mm. You know, I just had a different mindset, different different time in my life where I'm really enjoying my coaching and trying to uh, pass on more of what I experienced in my short time to kids that want to go through. Yeah. You know, because obviously there was a lot of that that I was unaware of until I experienced it, right? So mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying that. Plus, it's something that's so close to my heart because I was part of it since I was a young kid. So it's just another part of what what stemmed from from leaving Newcastle. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, thing is in regards to the, obviously the, you know, you're talking about you know there's so much to weigh up and everything else now. Um, Again, obviously, do you talk, everyone's like talking about COVID now. Obviously, it's a great opportunity for youth and everything else. But at the same time, though, it's a lot of you know people going. I don't want to move from where I am. You know, we're yeah. comfortable. Everything's good. Um, you know, whether they're playing at MPL level or they're in a A League academy or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, I'm not going anywhere. It's you know, let's just see it out for a bit and 
stick with it. Um, for me... Well, I think, like I said to you guys before, but the biggest thing is that players want to play. Correct. And, and obviously the reality is not everyone plays. There's 11 players on the pitch, but... Yeah, this you, is good. Yeah. When you speak to a young kid yeah. and they ask, well, I speak to young kids and they ask, where should we go? What should I do? You tell them, go somewhere where you're going to play. So it's hard because you get people that, that don't get an opportunity when they should really deserve it. Yeah. Or they're not really in that they don't get the luck, too. You need a bit of luck as well, right? Just like anything else. Correct. And they're just unlucky, you know? And I think there's... Uh, now, with the way things are, and obviously clubs need to spend less money, I think it is the best time to to look into these kind of players. Like, for example, if I talk about Sydney United, I'm talking about Patton Tommy that was at Western United. Mm-hmm. Yanni yeah. Picardo that so had opportunity yes. at first, right? These are guys that that I think can do just as well as I did, probably better, I would say more, you know, okay. Yep. given the opportunity, right? And, and it's close to me, but Joey Coletti, who's someone who's at, we are talking about Brisbane, Joey Coletti, who played Champions League, he was he was captain of the national team under, under 23s, under 17s, he woke yep. up everything, who's stuck without a club right now, right? He was in Norway, who's, uh, Norway still wanting back, but obviously it's hard for him to get overseas. Yeah. I've always just given you three names of players that would go into the A League now and do really well. Yep. Yeah. You know, I've always got a soft spot for Coletti. Yeah, oh, Joey Coletti up there, in Brisbane. Everyone loved him in Brisbane. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so he's, a, just, he's a good bloke. It's just uh, a bit of bad luck too, you know. Yeah. That's the biggest yeah, thing, is it? You know, didn't want to keep him, which is fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he gets released, but then six months later, there's new coaches up there anyway. So that's what I mean yeah. by a bit of luck. It's hard. Yeah. But he um. You know? What about, what I suppose about? It's, a bit, it's a bit like Mr. Faramini as well. Yeah, so well, yeah, Musti Mini, big, big example of his contract. Yeah. He was very unlucky. Yeah. Mm. You know? Very unlucky, but very lucky yeah, as well that they took him back. Yeah. 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 Well, he was. Not many clubs well, going to take him back. They didn't want to let him go. No. No, he was the captain. Yeah, he was doing really well. He was the captain, you know? Yeah. But he he had other things to consider. He just had a new newborn baby, yeah. his mm. wife, you know? Maybe he thinks about what he's going to do from there. He comes back. Mm. Yeah, there's always more to it, you know. That's the biggest thing. That's it. You've got to look at, obviously, the bigger picture and everything else. And as I said, it's, you, you've got to stop thinking about loyalty these days. You know what I mean? Like there's, It used to be so big back in the day and you no know, one club players and all this sort of stuff. Even if you sort of weren't playing every game or whatever it was, you know, you sort of felt like you owed the club that gave you something. Yeah, you know, it like, gave you a chance, obviously, you know, give them... Give them something, but nowadays, as yeah. you said, it's yeah, you've got to take what you can, and as you, you've got to go to a club where you're playing. You know, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 you look at obviously um, Andrew Hull is is a good one. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't getting the game time at Newcastle, and we can sit here and bag the shit out of him as much as we like for going to the Central Coast Mariners. Ben Kennedy's another one. They went, they went to the, our arch rivals. Yeah, they went. They for played three, every week. Three. You know, yeah, they played every week. Yeah. What are you going to do? You, you know, he needs to earn a living. Um, and if you're going to get, if you get told you're going to get played pretty well every week, and at the end of the day, you can see it as a player. You know, you know who's in the squad and who's there. You go, oh, you know, look, I can match up all right with him or shit. You know, yeah. that's going to be a challenge. Just light yourself up. Yeah. You've got, if, to be, you've got to be realistic too, but right? Because yeah. if, if I just compare myself, when I was at the Jets, who, who, it was hard for me to play. Who am I going to play in front of? Ronald Vargas. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Pato Rodriguez, right? They were both yeah. on guns and on fire. Yeah. Yep. And I was not, not a defensive player, not enough to be a defensive player, but even if I was, who am mm. I going to play in front of? Rugakovic or Kenorowski? There's no way, right? Yeah. So it's just a bit of that as well, you know what I mean? It's hard. you got these clubs. they got mm. some. They got gun players. Yeah. You know? and that's it. get a bit of luck maybe through players that get international call-ups or they, they yeah. end up leaving and it provides opportunity. <laughs> you know, so you kind of got to find that balance. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Aiden's put in here, mate. Uh, when you were younger, obviously, even now, who, who do you, who do you support overseas? Uh, I'm always, I always support a different team in different uh, different countries. Yeah, England. So EPL, I'm always Arsenal supporter. No. So that's been tough. Going down tomorrow. Uh, but growing <laughs> up, well, I was the best, right? Because it was on read, Invincibles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, in Spain, it was always uh, Barcelona, a Barcelona boy. Yeah. Always. Sounds, sounds like another freaking mate of ours, bloody Terence Ben. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. Remembers all the highs. You're the Invincibles. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but then you lost against us. Well, maybe I've always, always backed the other dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Chesney had a howler in the in the Carabao Cup against us and lost it to us. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know well, what cracks me up? I'm never going to move that down. I'll tell you what cracks me up. Bloody old mate the arm um, yesterday, was it, for Chelsea. Takes a piss break, runs off the pitch, goes to the toilet, and then still walks away with man of the match. That's amazing. No, that was, that was like, Eric Dyer, wasn't it? Yeah, Dyer. <laughs> oh, was it Tottenham? Yeah, Tottenham, sorry. Tottenham, yeah. Yeah, it was Eric yeah. Dyer. Eric Dyer, yeah. Tottenham, friggin' just, just wanders off. <laughs> then comes See, back. Biggest, just talking about that, it makes you wonder how many, how many kids now, though, would look up and say, which team do you support? Who's your favourite team? And they'd say Elite Clubs. Yeah. Or Elite yeah. Club. That's what you want. You want to try and create the environment in Australia, right? Correct. That's Everyone to watch it. Because even that answer there, you think of overseas, you don't think of A-League. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard to try and create that environment. Before we obviously let you go, we do want to talk to you a little bit, obviously, about, you know, again, you still saw in that young young category. Um, you, you, you played for the under-23s. Um, scored twice, I think, at the under-23s, or was it the Joeys? You scored two international goals for Australia. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, yeah, it depends. He's got a few, I think. so many friendlies. Yeah, so many I was going to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. only count the, the proper ones. <laughs> yeah. Wiki, ain't, Wiki only counts the proper ones. Um, yeah. That's why I don't really like to go off it. But, um, but yeah, you, play, you played, obviously, you know, the under-23s. How was that as an experience? Obviously, young kid representing your country. Again, obviously, you know, back when I was 20, um, not that I ever did, but obviously it was a lot easier to represent, obviously, at under-16 levels and everything else because they just give so many youth players a chance. You'd mm. take one youth team to one friendly and then, obviously, there'd be 16 other kids from, you know, around Australia for the next one. But yeah. well, how was that? You know, you know it's bad when the Vic- when the Victorian rep squad gave me an under-16 call-up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm right. long retired now. But what was that like, mate? What was yeah, it like well, representing your country? Well, I was with the under twenties with Port Ocon. Oh, Ocon, yeah, right. I, the younger, younger boy. Yeah. So, and obviously, I love that experience. We had a lot of games overseas in America um, with that squad. So then, come under twenty threes, because I was end of year October born, ninety five. Um, and actually, I became a senior player in that team. You know what yep. I mean? With Stefan Mork and, and kind of older player. So that was, I actually really enjoyed that because it was my first actual experience of being an older player. Because mm. I had been so many years as a young kid, as a young boy. And I was bouncing around captaincy with, with Aspro as well at the time, too, with Gombau as the coach. So I really, yep. I really, really enjoyed that. And um, I'm one of those guys that collect jerseys, right? So I got heaps of jerseys, memorabilia, <laughs> and the stuff from that. So. Yeah, we went to we went to Myanmar and we qualified on the yep. combat. So, yeah, right. yeah, I love that. That was a top experience. Crazy country to be in, in <laughs> Myanmar. You know what I mean? So another world over there. Absolutely. But under twenty threes, yeah. Loved it. Highlight loved it. highlight of my career. <laughs> under twenty threes, so if you can give me um give me three. Give me three highlights. Three things that stand out in your international slash um, we'll go A League career. Three, three, three right. moments. Whether three that's highlights. goals, games, people you've played with, whatever. All right, three, three highlights. Yeah, I already got them from my head. Number one, my goal and debut against Phoenix. Yep. That was uh, because that whole day it was crazy. Because I think it was still unsure if I was going to start that game. Yeah. And Liam Miller, I think, was sick, so he couldn't play. And Mike Mulvey told me like two minutes before team chat, so I wasn't even prepared to start. <laughs> I'd been on the bench for so many, so many like months and not playing that he told me that uh, I was starting. So <laughs> I scored the equaliser that game, and then Brandon scored the winner. So that was, that's number one highlight for me. Yeah. Uh, number two, even though I didn't score, it would have to be my shot against Liverpool for Brisbane. Mm. Oh yes, that was just so close. Yes, it's still like I still get like angry that it didn't go in because I've seen so many times that it drops for me. <laughs> and it was the one time I needed it and it didn't. Right, so but just that whole Liverpool game in general, more so. Yeah, that was just unreal. That Suncorp, 
Yeah, I was actually there. I've actually got a scarf behind me. Somewhere. Yeah, that was the top. And I got to swap jerseys with Henderson that game too. That was oh. actually... Because uh, we finished the game. Quick story. Now, I think we finished the yeah. game. And I turned around and it was Henderson. And I looked at him for a second. I go, nah, someone's asking him. Because everyone during the game, they will ask each other. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because come the Villarreal game, before that, I asked the number 10 for them, and he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I found out three of the other boys asked him, and when he walked off, he threw it in the crowd. Didn't even give it to anyone. <laughs> so, yeah, he got to G this all up. So Henderson, I'm like, surely someone's asked him. And I just said, can I have your jersey? Can we swap jerseys? He goes, yes, no problem. I'll give it to you after the game. I don't want to take it off. He was obviously the captain, so he didn't want to walk around with no shirt. Yeah. Mm. And then a couple of the other boys asked him after me, and he said, no, I've already promised promised me so I was buzzy and then <laughs> I couldn't find you so yeah. when, later on I went to the change room and eventually I sent my jersey in and he sent his out and I finally got it um, so my jersey he probably forgot in the change room but I still have his one <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, one, of the, one of the kit boys has probably got yours hanging up somewhere man. yeah my brother was a diehard Liverpool fan Yeah, diehard big time so when I actually he came he flew up to Brisbane for the game I ended up giving him my jersey I'd be giving him Henderson's jersey after the game. Oh. And he loved it. Damn, I bet he did. Yeah. I bet he did. He was, pretty, he was a bit unsure how to take it. And I said to him, you're going to have the jersey. I've got to play the game. So that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> no, I tell you what. I tell yeah. you what. Freaking Christ. As a diehard yeah. Liverpool myself, mate, that's, oh. Damn. Yeah, it was unreal. He still got it. What a yeah. moment. Lucky, but because my mother-in-law tried washing it. And I said, yeah, you don't wash these jerseys. No. What are you doing? Because it's not. I'm like, it's meant to smell forever. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get it. I'll tell you what, you. there's only lucky. one time that my missus has ever washed one of my football kits. I, like you, am a massive football kit collector. Yeah. Um, She washed it once, and it was my Birmingham City 100 years at St. Andrews Stadium. Oh. And you know how it's got, like, all that screen printing across the front? Yeah, it's all crinkly. She accidentally washed it. Put it in the dryer and half a screen printing fell off and I absolutely lost it. Because <laughs> I bought that from the stadium the year in, in 2006 when I was there directly yeah. from the stadium. And I was like, this is like, I don't care that you kill any of my other 40 <laughs> one thing you don't shirts, want it. just no, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, I, I hand wash all one. I hand wash all one. <laughs> so as, as compensation, I took her signed jet shirt, so... <laughs> so now I've got two side jet shirts. Bloody hell. Well, number, number, number three, three would be uh, we played Beijing Guan in Brisbane for mm. Champions League. Oh, yeah. That it was that loud that we couldn't um, we couldn't even yell at each other. Couldn't hear nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just wow. them, right? So me, me and Brella were close best mates. And we're looking at each other and we just I gave each other this look like, yeah, we're not going to hear each other. We're just going to play. <laughs> and we ended up winning that game, so it was that was number three for sure. Bloody ass. Up there. Yeah, so it was it was right in there. Proper no. proper loud. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's it. It's 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 what you want. Obviously you know, same thing. I can I can relate obviously you were watching Liverpool versus Melbourne. Liverpool versus yeah. Melbourne at MCG. Oh, yeah. 90, 98, 98, 99. Thousand screaming! Oh man, it was, was just, a G, wasn't it? It was the G. It was it was by far the best day. It was five hundred bucks or whatever it was, well spent. Uh, to sit literally yeah. right yeah. behind the dugout, like right behind the Liverpool boys. I was like two rows behind them. Um, yeah, it's just buzzing when you when you can't hear anything. You just imagine what it's like for the players. Like oh, you, know, exactly. you can't hear your mates and you can't hear blokes sitting right next to you where. You're not trying to concentrate, you know. All you're trying to do is just have well, a beer. And... Phase, you phase in and out, I guess. Yeah. Different players take it differently, but when you're yeah. actually playing, you don't hear too much. Yeah, but it just depends. depends. No. Um, obviously, yeah. quick talk. Obviously, you're saying you're part of the academy, part of an academy um, in Sydney. Yeah, oh, they're a big yeah. one too, aren't they? I believe. I think they've got like, um, they're, they're pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, football tech. Yeah, I was a graduate myself of Football Tech. So they, yeah. they, I trained with them all the way through to when I went to Brisbane. Yeah, right. So the boys, the short way of putting it, they do, they, they do the best to create the best possible environment for their players. Yep. Right? So they have two facilities out here in southwest Sydney where we have our full-time players, where we're like their club. 
you know, and they train with us. But the boys do things differently. They're both Glenn and Jason Trefira, Trefira brothers. They're both playing the A-League as well. Yeah, Trefira, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, they do things very differently to everyone else where they want the best possible outcome for the player. Yep. You know, and uh, it's one of those things where if you saw it, then you'd be blown away. Hmm. You know? And yeah, I've then, seen yeah, I've seen some photos because they've got their own like foot, so they've got like a little stadium or like a little stadium, yeah, well, like an indoor centre. Yeah, there are two facilities. Yeah, and well, all those photos are my photos, huh? Yeah, See, that's one thing I picked up was photography. So yeah. the weirdest thing for the boys, the Jets, is I didn't tell anyone, is because for some social for social media content in Sydney, I cover games for Perth Glory now. Oh, oh when, right. I, when I can get there, so. It was Jets v Perth Glory, and I was there taking photos. And they were tripping out a little bit, seeing me there on the sideline, <laughs> taking photos there, yeah. Wow. At, at McDonald Jones. So I think one of the guys, he didn't, he didn't realize, and he goes, oh, do you know your you way around? I go, yeah, I've been here once or twice before. That's probably Declan. Like, yeah, I've been here once or twice. But... Yeah, I'm still, still growing on that, but... Classic. Yeah, Football Tech, definitely something to uh, follow online, because... Uh, yeah, no, as I said, guys, yeah, absolutely, in the chat, if he's aren't... Yeah, I've um, just dumped the link in chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah dumped link, because I've seen so many uh, photos on... on I think the... Academy is the wrong word, right? Because even though we are technically an Academy, they're trying to they're trying to do something just... not. They're not people to say, we're trying to change the game in Australia. They're mm. just trying to do what the best possible things they can for the kids that come through the doors. Yeah, you know, see, the biggest thing for me is, and it's the one thing that I, you know, nearly every, the funny thing is nearly everyone we get on here, especially probably since COVID hit, um, obviously Joe Wheelhouse's um, buddy, what's his name from up up north? Um, oh, I've just gone blank. Can't yeah. Remember, can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, yeah, the, everyone's got an academy. Everyone's got a training school and shit like that. I don't know. For me, I just I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's a there's a really really good article written by Lucy Zellich. I actually did an article on Football yeah. Tech, and yeah. I featured in that one because I was uh, training Corey Gamiro. He oh, came yeah. in one on ones. So oh. Ones in private training. Yeah, and she sums it up quite nice in the article. So that'd be a good read. Um, I think she yeah. did it for the World Game. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's, yeah it's, it's, to me, it's just something that I don't know. There's there's so many academies, mate. There's like, do you? Yeah, I mean, there's so many academies around. Um, obviously, everyone doing their own thing. Um, you know, yours, your one is a little bit different. Obviously, it's, it's a big, bigger scale. But obviously, you know, your smaller ones. To me, I was just more in. Yeah, Zenon. Zenon, that's it. Zenon Caravella, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Caravella. So we play games yeah. against Caravella. He has a. a yeah, Academy up north. In North Queensland, and we go up there and compete. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were, yeah, before. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, I don't know, for me, it's just, I'd love to see something put together. You know, all these, I'd love to take, you know, in my head, it's like the biggest thing of what we've taken out of look, listening to other older players um, is how much they need and would love the um, AIS to come back. The Academy in oh, Canberra. AIS, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? It, it was so beneficial for so many Australians and everything else. Which is what obviously all these academy, smaller academies and everything else are trying to do. They're trying to raise the next young, next big thing. Sort yeah. of. And I just, yeah. I'm just like in my head, it's just like you look at all these plays, your Zenon Caravellas, your Joe Wheelhouses, friggin' um, but it's just yeah, again, nearly every friggin' A League, ex A League players got one. Scotty Miller, bloody heaps of like all the boys in Adelaide have got one. Nearly all the past players in Adelaide have got an academy themselves. Um. Mm. And I just in my head, I'm like, sure, I would love to just see these guys just all come together, take all their knowledge, and then just start something massive. You know, start I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. what what would well, what, what are your what are your thoughts on that? that? Yeah, I mean, would I you? Think that's what that chat with Aloisi's and that uh, Craig Moore, uh, Swartzer, the Duca. Yes, they were yeah. trying to discuss something like that, weren't they? Correct. Yeah, and that's yes. that's where it really hit me. I was watching that exactly that, and yeah, yeah, they're just like obviously the. You know, we need an, an AIS. We need an institute where the best players in Australia come to one place, and yeah, they get trained, and they live together, and they you know, live and breathe. Well, they were football. pros straight exactly. away before. Exactly. Before exactly else, right. They had, yeah, they had professionalism, right? 
Yeah, and that's the biggest thing for me, and that's the thing. You know, Australian football needs to grow. It needs to grow, obviously, a lot bigger than what it is. Um, the women's game now, obviously, getting the World Cup is massive. That that's going to help yeah, the women's game. Good. Yeah, I think it's good for the women's game because that's saying that deserves more credit. I think than what it oh. gets. And, oh. even, and they played, they played against Brazil and Newcastle. Well, I'm into that game. We yeah. love it. We love that. All right. Yeah. It was packed. McDonald Jones Stadium full. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, the wife went down yeah. to that one. Chile went watching yeah. Chile as well. Yeah, it, it, that's the best thing. And you know, the biggest thing is we've had a few of the girls on ex jet current and ex jets, obviously, and um, just listening to what they go through and what they have to deal with is atrocious. The fact that you know, and the big difference between what sort of stuff you get at Newcastle versus what you get at Melbourne City because of the price tag and because of the name is. Yeah stupid but you know four month contracts can you imagine yourself to no, you like you, you you go you sign get signed to an a-league club on a four month contract yeah well a lot of these girls don't get an off season right that's it because uh they sign say in w league and once w league finishes they sign if they have the opportunity overseas yeah mm. or they majority of them or all the plain city majority Sydney. of them come to npo new south wales yeah and yeah. that's it. Really Obviously, a few of the girls, Hannah Brewer. Um, yeah. A few of the girls well, we've had on. Tara right, Andrews. Uh, I trained often with Nikki Flannery, right? She was uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. a Jets girl. Yep. And now she's up here, yeah. up here in Sydney. Yeah, and that's it. You know, obviously, um, there's yeah. a few of them. Tara, obviously, yeah, Tara. Um, All right, Andrews. You know, they carpool. You know, they'll work, they'll work during the day, finish at 4 or 5 o'clock or whatever it is, and then friggin' travel to Sydney just for training. And yeah, then come back. Hard. Yeah. You know, just it's just crazy mm-hmm. what they have to go through. Um, where, you know, in my head, I'm like, shit, surely they can be on a yearly contract and do more things with academies. And um, as I said, you know, we're talking about academies. Like, shit, let's get them into the schools. Let's get them into academies representing their club. Well, um, I think the best, thing, the best thing is to have the right people, like you said. You, you, you said get the right, the right minds and bring everyone together. I think that's the hardest part. Oh, 100%. Get the right people yeah. that... Because everyone, everyone's got their own idea the right of way of doing it. Yeah. But more so people with academies, they want to do the right thing by the kids. Yeah. But they also have their own style, right? And everyone everyone will preach that they're the best. So Yeah. Yeah, no, that's yeah, exactly that's it. Um, yeah, yeah, CNA, we, yeah, you, you definitely did. We, we was talking about that a little bit before. Um, the double, I believe, against... No, was it double? Villarreal. Villarreal? Yeah, yeah. Villarreal, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a wonder strike. Yeah. Yeah, that was a top game. But even that, that season, but under Franz Tyson, that was just a good season. Where I just had the freedom to shoot. And mm. as uh, most people know, when I have a bit of a space, I hit the ball. So yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that game, it, so. yeah that's yeah. a given. That's a given. That was a top game. The, halfway, the one from halfway against the coast proves that. <laughs> Give yeah. him some space. Right. He's going it. He's going it. Top bins. <laughs> halfway. <laughs> Nah, too easy, mate. We were going to wrap it up, mate. We'll let you go. As It was great to have a, sit down and have a bit of a chat to you about um, you know, what you've been up to and everything else. I think the last question I've just got for you is pretty straightforward, mate. Five-year plan. What do you what do you want to be doing in the next five years in football? See, mate, so my next five years, I would like to continue growing with where I'm at, yep. football jet, uh, coaching-wise and whatnot. But football-wise on the pitch, um, given obviously I'm at Tassin United, I think it would be awesome to uh, to have some top FA Cup head to heads um, with some A League boys, mm. with some A League teams, and maybe make a final. Yep. I think that would be uh, that would be good next five years. But I'm at a different stage in my life too with my misses. So yep. at this stage, with the way this year's gone, I just hope for the next five years for good health, uh, keep my family around me, and uh, just keep keep working hard, and things will come. That's Again, exactly. He's gone. That's the best way for me to view it. Absolutely. More, chan- mate, more chances for him to get down to McDonald Jones and take some photos. Yeah, that's it. Next time I'm down there, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell! I'll get him to do yeah, a couple for us for our, for our channel. Um, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. Look, my absolute pleasure. As I said, from you know, from Newcastle Jets fans, mate, we thank you for your time at the Jets. Um, obviously, not as long as obviously some of us would have liked. We thought that you definitely could have. Um, you definitely deserve a little bit more time and everything else. But we do thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to the club. Um, yeah, thanks you know, for having me. The to, yeah, nah, cheers, man. As I said, we'll have you any time. Um, as I said, guys in the chat, be sure. Benny's whacked the link in there. Um, go and obviously check out Football Tech down there in Sydney. If you're in Sydney, 
get down to Sydney, check out the check out Devante and the boys um, this season, next season. Is it finished yet? Yeah? Finished? Oh, we got another two games in finals. Two yeah, games in finals. Yeah, yeah. We're, doing, we're doing well. We're coming second uh, this weekend's top of the table clash. So we got lucky with our season up here. We went right. We they adjusted our season to an eleven game season. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's so team. weird. I just can't keep up with it because obviously yeah, Newcastle yeah. boys. So I watched the local MPL, the buds, and yeah. stuff like that. And they had they, they cancelled ours. Ours down here complete outright. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a good thing. Though. I think it's a good it thing. Off. No, well, the, the, in Newcastle, they they told us that there was only going to be nine games, and then they got to nine games and went, oh, no, we'll add a few more in. We're good. We've still got time. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. the whole year away. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, you know. Josh Rose freaking took on the coach. We were talking to him the other week. Took on the gig at Edgy as a part-time. He goes, mate, you told me this was only meant to be six games. Stin, there's no added games. What the hell? He had his hands full, too, with his academy. He's doing really well down there, too. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. We plugged his stuff. Yeah, that was the other one I was trying to think yeah, of before. Football. But yeah, he's doing very well. He's doing good stuff down there, obviously, trying to get the... Trying to pick, as I said, doing trying to pick up all the the best Central Coast players and getting them out of there quicker than um, getting getting them out there before the coast take them over. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> uh, get them down to Sydney or Newcastle. But no, mate, muchly appreciated. Um, as I said, guys, be sure to go down and check. Give the link. Go like it on Facebook. I'm sure it's all over Facebook and Instagram and everything like that. Um, but yeah, muchly appreciated for your time, mate. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks for the chat, boys. Take hey, it easy, mate. Bye. There we go. Thank you very much to Devante. Um, yeah, good. good ins- great. That was a great chat. Good chat. Good chat. I like them when they just run smooth as silk, talk a bit of football, talk a bit of his career. Um, bang of a chat. How's everyone in the chat? How is everybody? How is, how is chat? Apologise. Didn't really get in there to say good day to everybody yeah. or whatever it is. Elliot, but- Elliot posted something a hell of a lot earlier that I need to address. It's can't knock BK for going. He gets a pass for long term service. No, BK gets a pass because he because he left and joined the coast the right way. No, BK friggin's not gone. by being a dick. No, B, B, BK's friggin' free like pass is now BK's free pass is now null and void because he went to land. <laughs> um, <laughs> everything was sweet until he took on that gig. It's um yeah, have anyway. we discussed the new kits? No, we haven't. No, so there's, there's, that's something Hello. I was definitely going to talk about. I know so many Do people. I leave it running. Yeah, I'll leave it running. Why not? I yeah, we're not going to go too much. We're going to make this sort of quick. We've got a bit, bit, a bit of news, real basic news. We'll talk about obviously. We have, other, we have something else to record. Yes, um, but yes, we'll talk about the kits because I know so many people have been up in the air about my decisions well, and my thoughts. Eat. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So we'll get a little bit of thoughts. Before we start, before you get Ben and my thoughts, what are your thoughts in the chat? Throw them in there. Do you like the blue? Do you like the friggin' um, goal? Yeah, are you sitting on the fence still? Because again, let's be honest, it's not the best photo to, you know, to say what it's actually going to look like, whether there's going to be pinstripes, there's going to be diamonds in it, or fucking whatever. Well, Jeff, you're on the lurk. Jeffy, as always, on the lurk. How are you, champ? Level-headed guy, Devante. Good luck in the future. Absolutely. He Absolutely. is. He's really down to earth. I do. When I, when I get up to Newey, I'm gonna do. A, I've got to go. I've got to do a road trip anyway down to Sydney to see Loudy and a few of the boys. But we'll definitely be heading to the 58 game because they love love the shit down there. And, yeah, uh, Loudy loves 58. We'll we'll go sit on the fence and obviously um go sit here and have, have a few tears with the lads. Um, I love the gold. I'm sitting on the fence with the blue on the fence. If it's not finished product hmm. gold is back hey gents oh, I'm lurking well too <laughs> well thanks beautiful yeah look it's lurking well I'm oh, again I'm what's this I'm waiting to see them on the players yeah look I'm yeah I'm not going to sit here I'm not sold on anything um my, my opinion my opinion only yeah not no one else's the the photo yes, that we were given. <laughs> yes, the third kit's coming. The yep. photos that were that were mocked up for us to look at. Um, I think personally was the wrong way to go about it. I think he... Lockie's in trouble with Nightbot again. Oh, seriously, get off the <laughs> get off the caps lock. Lockie, He's got Lockie. 
<laughs> the only reason I put Nightbot, we only, the only reason we put Nightbot in here is because of you. Um, <laughs> we'd, we'd take him out if if you stopped. Yeah, but the giveaway didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, as I said, to me the whole thing was, in my opinion, just yeah. I would have just waited till we've actually got a kit, even if it's a month or whatever behind everyone else. I just yeah, just just let me have a look at the kit. Colors can look very different on different materials. You can't tell me exactly the color itself. That gold could be completely different. It could be the exact same color um, as what we had before. Prime example: um, the kit that Devante has on in the thumbnail photo. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. When those three kits were released. I didn't... You know how it's got, like, the dark... The big... Two big dark blue stripes and then the thin one through the middle? Hmm. I didn't realise that because it doesn't show it. When those kits were released in the... Cool. In the gold... Yeah. That those darker panels... Yeah. Were fucking orange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that and it didn't... It didn't... You couldn't see that in any of the promotional photos. It looked like a different shade of... Gold. Correct the Monday. Well, I didn't Monday. notice until I actually got the shirt and hung it up that they're actually fucking orange. And that's the biggest thing. You can't take that shit. You can't take a photo like that, which is just Photoshop that I could do. It's, no, no, no. It's, it's a 3D render in Photoshop is what it is. Yeah. Like what I have to do for FIFA Kids. <clears throat> correct, correct. So, Same thing. Um, um, as, uh, as for the colours and the right colours, I think the away kit is bang on with the colours. If that looks like that on the material that it's being produced on, fuck me, screw the home kit. They'd be calling for a stretcher soon. <laughs> Carried out by his own stretcher. Love it. Um, but yeah, Not so... Not carry him out on said stretcher. Oh, I'm... I'm not going to sit here and go on about the shirts because at the end of the day, I'm yeah, I'm not sold until I see the actual thing. As few oh, I never it. showed you the photo, did I? What? The one how about I told you? You know how it's got like that stadium in the background with the lights. Hmm. I actually have that exact same image on my computer. It's a stock photo. What? It's a stock photo. Huh. One of those unlicensed photos from like a, a supplier of like stock images. Ah. Like Shutterstock from places like that where you it's pay it so you use the licensed a, copy of it. He's randomly now talking about my FIFA 21 one. No, 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 no. The Jets Kits one. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were too. Yes. Yes. My apologies. Yeah, you did tell me. Yeah. I had that same image yeah. on my computer. Yeah, you did because Kiki done the thing. used it for something else. That's right. I yeah. had the exact same background image. Yeah, exactly right. I do remember you saying that. Which um, means, which, which to me means that I think it may have been hastily put together. <laughs> um, but yeah. Victory kits, though. Not going to go too much into the oh, kits, yeah. as I said. Until we see the final product on a player yeah. or a live shot of the actual shirt, yeah. not going into it. Um, Melbourne Victory shirts look good. They, um, look, they look Mickey Mouse. Look good. Western Sydney Wanderers look trash. You've got a map of Melbourne on them. Yeah, it does look good. Um, the, actually, sorry, the, the white one for Western Sydney's fine. It's, I not, it's not shared, one. it's not good, whatever. But the red one they've got, their home one, looks like a rugby union shirt. It looks trash. It looks like the worst. It's terrible. Um, who else was there that freaking brought How one out? How long did you deal with Kappa? Another year, I think. Um, Adelaide's, Adelaide's freaking the yellow is Adelaide's mint. Good. The That's Adelaide one is mint. Um, that reminds me of an Arsenal away kit. Yeah, and same as Liverpool. The yellow and the red. Yeah. Um, the yellow with the burgundy. Yeah. Thoughts on top of Stanley downgrade this year for FFA. Haven't looked at Fever 21 yet. Not yeah. going to. The other thing I'll say about that is that he's over the age of 30, so they're going to knock him down anyway. Correct. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? But, lads, we can fix that with... But, lads, we can fix that with... um. You're right. <laughs> we can we can fix that with some modding. Yeah. Josh and I have both already preloaded FIFA 21 onto our PCs, waiting for a release date that we can actually open the game. That's it. Lockie, for your back, boys. 
Everyone, round of applause for Lockie. He's <laughs> he's beaten the Nightbot. Who's now Lockie Ma ha 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 Nightbot ha ha. <laughs> Mickey got a card. No, I'm not weighing on the floor. Oh, Mickey Neil. Fucking Luke's been all over FIFA 21. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from him. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, we are gonna we're gonna sort of wrap it up. I'm not gonna go into too much about the shirts and shit like that. As I said, yeah. in saying that, in saying that, we do have some big stuff coming. Massive, massive stuff. Um, we hope to drop most. Of, we'll drop some most of it of on some of it over the weekend, and then Monday at the, uh, will be the final product. Obviously, with a poll. We'll leave it at that. Keep, keep an eye on our socials. Yeah, big time. Big keep time. Keep an eye on our socials, big time. Yes, Luke, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, so um, stay tuned. Obviously, over the weekend, we will give a little snippet of what's to come. Monday will be another, obviously, the will, will be the final product, obviously, that, so everyone can get involved in it. Um, but yeah, big things for us. We figured, why not? Let's do it. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, we are going to slowly wrap it up. So we do thank everyone for jumping in tonight. Devante, massive, massive thanks. Um, giving us a bit of insight into, obviously, yeah, what his life is like now. Again, not everyone's life, obviously, is 100% A-League and has to be A-League, has to be A-League, professional, professional. It's, you know, some people are just happy to see what they've seen and... Um, yeah, you know, take take life by the hands, and obviously see what comes next. He's Maybe on the nine to nine grind. Uh, on the nine, nine to five grind. grind, yeah, that's it. Maybe a stint at Macarthur. Who knows? Down the road. Maybe um, an emergency loan spell. We never know. Absolutely. Before we go too far, obviously, how Ooh, good is that little? Bad. How good is that little friggin' whoa? Thanks to Ben. The, trans the transition. The transition. How good is it? Um, yeah. Obviously, Gabriel Mark Thomas running a promo for us these glasses that i've got on my head at the moment um if you go in and see Lockie, he'll knock them down to 99 bucks for you from 200 dollars. Mm -hmm. if you're in a health fund they will most likely be free and you'll probably pick up two pairs for that price um but yeah be sure go see them they are absolutely brilliant ben still needs to get down to get his sorted and um but again someone like ben and myself obviously who sit in front of computers all day whether it be work or here beneficial 100% beneficial. So be sure I spend to... a lot of time in front of these screens. So be sure, go down and see Lockie. Get a pair of these. They are brilliant. They make you look smarter. Um, <laughs> we'll go with that. Hey, Can we get an extra... Oh, he's already done it. Thanks, Luke. This is why you're a mod. Oh, the hypnotism trick. I was going to say, can we get an exclamation mark specs in the chat? But no, he's already no, done he's it. he's already on it. Good boy. Spending the big budget on VFX, lads. VFX? I'm not here. Come see me, legends. I will look after you. Oh, Don't spending worry. the big budget on visual effects. Visual effects, yeah. <laughs> no, that was just me bored. That was it. Exactly it. Um, but yeah, we're going to leave it there. We thank everyone for jumping in the chat. Everyone who come in, as always, we do thank it. Thank you guys uh, for being here every week. We will be Don't here be next week. Again, as I said last week, no idea who we're going to have, if at all. If it, if it's nobody, it'll be us. Um, but yeah, big time. Go maybe, go. maybe an impromptu FIFA stream against each other. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it won't, it won't be that now because we've just said it. <laughs> um, but could it be? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, but it might not be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thousand views on the career mode video. Congrats. Absolutely. Oh, big, thank you. Big ups to Ben. Uh, big ups to Ben. Me, and I think we're up by about 30 subscribers now. Absolutely. Jump off that video alone. Yes. Which brings me to my next point. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, get on it. Do it. Subscribe to Cross by Capers. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, it's been in for two days. Very good. Um, yeah, as I said, be sure to go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, jump onto the Twitch site as well. Facebook. You can find us on Anchor, Spotify, Apple. 
Apple? No, which one? Yeah, oh. yes. yeah Apple, yes. Oh, shit, I'm doing that Whoa. in Discord. I don't want to do that in Discord. <laughs> Um, but yeah, be sure to go check us all in our socials, like them, share everything around. The biggest thing, and we can't thank you guys enough for doing it, is sharing everything. Everything that we post on the socials, share it around. I don't care whether I've shared it into a, in some freaking Facebook group that you're a part of, do it again. We just want to get it out as big, especially this one that we're, we're obviously looking at doing um, on, the 8th, on the 17th, 17th of October, Saturday. That's the date, so make sure he's freaking aren't doing anything. Um, lock that date in the seventeenth. Sure I'm not doing anything. Seventeenth, <laughs> lock it in. That's that's the that's the date that we're going to do it. We'll roll out the shit over the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, as I said, guys, big ups. Thank you very much. Big shout out to Benny. Thank had a bit you. of a, had a bit of a shit fight freaking last week, but freaking he's not going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. FIFA twenty one coming out soon. You'll see him. He'll, he's taking a little bit of a bit of a. I took down. a couple of days to relax and relax and rejuvenate yeah. and calm down. A bit of wussa and um, yeah, yeah, very much a bit of wussa. He'll be raring to go um, as FIFA drops next Tuesday. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there. What? I won't be doing anything. Good man, beautiful. We'll see you guys soon. Anyway, take it easy. As always, we hate Coast Scum. Too friggin' right, we do. Yeah. Get it in the chat. Hashtag we hate Coast Scum. Um, yeah, my name's Josh. Benno there. Gabriel Mark, Tomatris, major sponsor in the middle, looking nice and pretty. Hope you've enjoyed. We'll catch you guys real soon. Take it easy. See ya. <laughs>